This is the West Michigan Sports Show, presented by Daysos Digital. Now, here's your host, Brandon Worth. Welcome back, everybody, to the West Michigan Sports Show, presented by our great friends at Daysos Digital. Navigate your way through the digital wilderness with the experts of Daysos Digital. Find out more at DaysosDigital.com. It's yours truly, Brandon Worth, joining you here on News Radio WBRM. Big thanks to everybody that have tuned in this afternoon. Got a unique episode for you here today we won't get into the local sports scoreboard we'll get back and recap that in full next week Uh, but I've had some opportunities over the last couple of days uh, to chat with some former and current uh, local athletes all three of them football players and get to hear their perspective on the impact of the sport what they're doing and giving back if they're alumni as well as the current season and where their team is at when in terms of chemistry and of course the game itself and I wanted to air those for you guys because obviously number one you guys deserve to hear interviews and I haven't been able to get you some so I want to make sure to get you guys uh, voices that are not mine because I know my voice can definitely be irritating after a while or at least it is in my own ears I don't know about you I've gotten a lot of kind comments but man hearing my own voice all the time uh, I don't know it doesn't sound great but anyway uh, I appreciate all the support as well that have come with the show as well. So I wanted to do that, and I just wanted you to get the perspective, and we'll kind of weave in a little bit the importance of local sports to an athlete's perspective and uh, how the media especially um, can help with that with interviews like this, and uh, especially for these athletes handling these interviews like a champ because it's not easy to go on a live broadcast or do a live interview uh, with a lot of the pressure on the line, a lot of ears listening, and be able to nail it. And all three of these guys certainly did that. So big thanks goes out to our sponsors, of course, including Days Host Digital, Johnson's Automotive, the Schubert Insurance Agency, Quality Car and Truck Repair, Entrecare, Big Rapids, Paris Auto Sales and Service, Big Rapids, Motor the Macasta Asselet Transit Authority, and the Macasta Asselet Career Center. Thank you for your support. If you want to be a supporter, call 796-7000. Get your business in the door with our boy, Aaron DeBoer. He can hit you up and he can get your business in our local sports coverage. We'd be happy to have you. Long list already, but there's no page limit when it comes to the support of local high school sports because that is what it's all about. So really quick, this first interview uh, is with a Big Rapids Cardinal player, Jonathan Lazinski, a starting backer. He's one of the primary tacklers for this team. And I think especially congratulations needs to go out for their win last night. Conference Red Division Championship winning win last night. Congrats to Coach Selter and the Cardinals. Uh, but I think with Jonathan, we had him on the rundown and obviously we didn't get to hear from him a lot um, because he is a simple spoken person and uh jt and i tend to talk a little bit but uh, i think the biggest thing that we got with jonathan is the way that he really analyzes the game breaks it down and simplifies it is very very impressive and i think that is something that a lot of high schoolers um when it talks to you know talking to the media talking to the local paper um they really do a good job but i think with jonathan the way that he uses the analysis i think is a really cool portion and uh it was a really great thing to have have him on the rundown as a secondary voice and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, all the insight that he had take a look all right let's get into football stuff obviously we had a lot happening here in week six we'll start with the game that is most prevalent as i am outnumbered and i was forced to start with big rapids but uh, you guys got the win against tri-county uh especially for that game I'm dominant on the scoreboard, obviously getting a huge win, but a lot of the impact and a lot of the feedback was it seemed like you guys made a couple of mistakes that you want to fix and that this game really, it got out of hand, but you guys could have thumped them a little bit more just with a little bit better execution. Yeah, um, I agree. I think that uh, offensive wise, we ran the ball very well. I think that um, our, our passing game, you know, it, it was, we had some drop balls, but it, it'll get better over time. We haven't had, to, we haven't had to use it much. So right. we're and just I, trying to work it. Yeah. And we talked to, to Garrett as well as Earl last week. And, and they said that is something looking ahead. Obviously when we talk about playoffs here later on, that's something that you guys want to improve with. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to playing in that environment, right? Tri County is a place that is not easy to play, right? Their fans are really devoted to the team. Yeah. Uh, the field can be very conditional. It's a very old fashioned grass field, small. right? So weather and it's small, right? Yeah. And so, but you, guys were able to really and that seems like it's really been the the road warrior mindset for you guys this year obviously uh losing to pawpaw but never really since the road going on the road you guys have been dominant what has been the key to really just blocking out the noise and uh, playing clean football since week one you guys haven't lost since uh i, th- I think we just had that mindset of you know we, we can't lose again right and um 
that we we go into every game thinking that we have it and we should beat these guys, but don't overlook them. Absolutely. And uh, for sure, when it look ahead here, obviously we'll get into the, the previews here, but uh, I think the biggest thing looking at this conference is, is really now we're kind of seeing Nuego's in for tri County and uh, tri County, a little bit on a down year, Nuego on an up year, big Rapids Reed city, obviously there. Um, but when it comes to this week, this matchup, I mean, what's the biggest thing that comes to mind? What is really the thing you guys are prepping for against a good Nuego team? That's really looking to, to make some noise and uh, really upset some fans here in big Rapids next week. Yeah. Yeah, we're um we're looking. I mean, I guess that we just shut down their you know that T offense. They run that. Just shut that down. Don't let them get any like. Don't let them think they have a chance. Don't let them hang with us. There you have it. Big thanks to Jonathan for joining us on the rundown. You can obviously follow along with all CSA football coverage on the Big Rapids Daily News and WBRN YouTube channel. So you can watch every weekly episode where we break down CSA sports. He was with us for a playoff picture breakdown, which you can view as the last episode uh, wherever that you get uh, your YouTube content. Uh, The second one that I wanted to bring in uh, was a guy that I especially really appreciate the way that he has given back as one that truly aspires to do that myself. Johnny Andres, a former Reed City running back from last year, now going to Ferris State and doing great things. Uh, He's also competing, uh, not necessarily on the physical playing surface but with a controller in the new esports realm and uh by the way he is a really good video gamer let me tell you that and i wish we would have talked more about it but uh johnny is a guy that has given back to the program he's now an assistant coach with the youth and he wants to give back to the sport in the town that gave him so much to look forward to growing up and i think that's a really big part of it and i think it really goes to show that it really does make a difference when you bring a lot of these young athletes and young men and women into sport because the memory growing up and seeing those games whether you are a eighth grader seventh grader even all the way as early as a kindergartner watching those games and knowing you want to be on that stage it makes an impact more than you could ever know and this is a testament especially to the work that johnny's put in to be one of the most legendary running backs of all time in reed city history here's johnny in our interview just yesterday during the homecoming win for the coyotes over the grand tigers a former Coyote player on last year's team. Many of you are guessing. I think I even got a text earlier uh, from guesses already. Apparently, people really like me teasing these things, Mark, because now they're starting to guess, which is great. And uh, we will finally reveal who our guest is. It's Johnny Andres from last year's regional final championship team. And Johnny, so glad that you're here. What does it feel like to be back here in Reed City and now watching a football game from the sidelines? It's got to feel a little weird for you. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's really weird looking at at these boys play that I've played with for so long and watching them do what I've done for so long. And I mean, I'm just I'm so glad to get to watch them play, especially at the level they are now. I mean, they're, they're really doing something special. Yeah, it's really fun to see when it comes to this group, especially you were with a lot of these guys last year in the backfield right with guys like Andrew obviously we had a couple other guys in the backfield like Max Hammond and Zach Erickson but when you look especially at these backs you saw some of them last year especially in practice Uh, what are the things that especially stand out to you about this group in particular and the way they run the football Uh, I think they're they're really fast this is like one of the fastest (laughs) backfields I've seen in a long time I mean Case and Coppett coming in as a freshman I mean I think he's a beast and with Andrew there to lead the backfield, I mean, and I believe it's Owen Williams uh, on the other side of that backfield too, which honestly, I'm really, I'm really impressed with him this year. And I think it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun to watch these guys. Absolutely. And uh, Mark, especially looking back at that last year's team, I know that there was one point that you brought up. It was a three headed monster. You had the speed, you had the size and you had the guy that could do it all as well. And obviously we got the guy that had probably one of the fastest hundreds and two hundreds that we've seen in quite some time. And it just goes to credit, especially you guys as multi sport athletes. But I think what the biggest thing is for you guys, you guys are training basically once the school year ends all the way for the season. And obviously it's not necessarily like team sanctioned stuff. Obviously there's rules in place, but you guys go out you flip tires by yourself. You're going out and you're already doing a lot of patterns. Just talk about the work that you guys do in the summertime that preps you for the season. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's grueling, but I mean this group here and along with the group last year and even the group before that, I mean, just some of the most driven kids that I, 
I'll ever play with or that, I mean, that have ever went through this program, I feel like. I mean, just getting that chance to play with them with such a talented, hardworking group for both years on varsity and even watching now, it's just, it's incredible. I have a question. You, you, a lot of these linemen were in front of you last year. We have uh, four seniors that are offensive linemen. Uh, what's the improvement that you've seen from last year to this year with our line play um, between their junior year and their senior year? Woodside is the only uh, junior that's on the line, but what are you noticing about the line play up front? Uh, I think their confidence is really high this year. I mean, they're a younger line last year, and I mean, they got they got the job done. But I mean, looking at them this year compared to that last year, I mean, they're just the confidence they have this year going every snap. I mean, it's just it, it's improved a lot, in my opinion. Kianis will take the kick return. He's going to go inside the numbers, breaks one tackle. He's uprooted at about the 36 yard line. Reed City's offense. We'll take over here for the first drive of the second half. And uh, your favorite play, obviously you don't have to throw the numbers out there, but what was, what was your favorite play when it came to getting the football? When you heard that call direction, who was in front of you? What was the go-to where you heard it? And you're like, yeah, moneymaker. I'm ready for this. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with um, 25 counter. I know some people might not know exactly what that is. Oh, but. okay. I thought you were going to say sweep. So the fact that you said counter Call me low off guard. Why do you like counter so much? Oh my God. Well, I mean, Max last year, cause he just keep running it, running it, running it, hitting that. And then a counter is like, it's kind of the same motion of the play, but you have the other running back coming back. And that's usually what I would do. And I mean, it just caught the defense completely off guard and they, it, it worked almost every time. More of our exclusive interviews and the whole West Michigan sports show program after this year on WBRN. At Dezos Digital, we're your guides through the digital wilderness, helping small businesses thrive amidst the complexities of the online world. Just like a forest ecosystem, the digital landscape can be vast and daunting, but with our expertise, we navigate through it, crafting tailored marketing and advertising strategies that resonate with your audience and drive tangible results. With a focus on precision and efficiency, we empower businesses to harness their full potential on digital platforms, ensuring growth and success in today's competitive market. Want more? Find out more at DezosDigital.com. Welcome back here to the West Michigan Sports Show presented by Dezos Digital. Uh, for those just joining us, just want to catch you up to speed. We got a local high school uh, pair of athletes, I should say pair plus one, three athletes um, that we are interviewing uh, about the impact that it had on their sport, their team right now, as well as what they have, their thoughts on the team this year, um, if they are alumni. But uh, we appreciate always hearing back from them and the impact that sports have. If you miss the first half of the episode, you're just joining us live over the airwaves, you can go back on WBRN.com, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, podcast where each and every episode is aired exclusively in a podcast format so we'll get back to the interview here with johnny andres and why he's given back to the sport that he loved growing up as a kid and why it's got to be in a reed city count logo pass incomplete as jackson looked to throw to mckinney but mckinney forgot the football might have been coming so they were not on the same page he was running a go yeah and lando thought he was running a flat and so miscommunication that'll be second down upcoming uh, here for Reed City Ball, still at the 38-yard line. If you're just joining us, 33 nothing our score. Big thanks go out especially to Johnson's Automotive Service, serving the area with honesty and integrity. North State Street, Big Rapids is no lineup here for second and 10. And Grant Tigers just trying to really find a way to make some type of a big stop there. Jump off sides, and they're going to blow this one dead for an offsides penalty against the Grant Tigers and Anthony Clark, the personality he is Johnny, you know him as well as I do. He loves when he's able to draw guys offside. Oh There's no God. doubt about that. He's out there doing jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way he is. That's yeah. just the way he is. Mm -hmm. But with the work on the line, especially I'm glad that Mark hit on that because you guys were obviously growing a lot through you guys played. Obviously those guys on the field were freshmen while you were sophomore. Just talk about the, the, the growth that you guys had going from the JV level all the way to the varsity level. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I did play with these boys, a lot of these boys on JV. And, I mean, the coming into JV, I mean, as freshmen, I mean, there's obviously, I mean, there's a um, a learning curve there for freshmen coming in. It's kind of a shock to the system, I mean, because, I mean, those boys have never played high school football. And so having to kind of lead that team, it really helped me build relationships with those guys and really just create a 
a bond with them that I was able to carry through into my varsity in a varsity with them my uh, senior year and their junior year great run there from williams will pick up a first down there to just about the 45 yard line we'll see if they spot it back here a couple yards so another evil's general store first down family tradition since 1920 stop down in uptown reed city for all of your convenience and home good needs and uh, johnny will of course we'll let you enjoy the game we'll leave you with one last question here uh what was your favorite part about reed city football uh, and obviously you can extend this question because you're now giving back to the program as an assistant coach, which I think is super cool. Obviously you're staying local as a bulldog. Absolutely mm-hmm. love yeah. that as a former bulldog alum. Here's Coppock now to the left side. He's going to try to run around some tigers. He's going to be brought down. Nice chase down tackle there at the DN spot there on the play flag thrown after the play. Hold on. We have some extracurricular. Yeah, I think it's going to go against the coyotes. Might not have been cookie recipes they were exchanging this time. Maybe it was phone numbers for after the game. If the trash talk were to continue, maybe the parking lot, who knows? Uh, it was Clark as well as it looked like Hayden Cass that were getting into it after the whistle. Those guys getting, obviously, Johnny, you know more than anybody. The game is so physical. It goes for so long. And so obviously there's going to be things that boil over. So Anthony's going to get called for the personal foul. Now I'll go back to the question. Your favorite thing about Reed City football and why you want to get back an assistant coach. Uh, I mean, I know it starts at a young age and it starts, especially with Reed City. I mean, a lot of our, I mean, that's where, like, we're, we built for out, out there in seventh, eighth grade, sixth, fifth grade. I mean, all those grades are just preparation for moments like these on nights like this, homecoming, senior year, junior year. I mean, these are the nights you look forward to. These are the games you come to as a middle schooler and watch and say, hey, those guys are really old. But then only in a couple of short years, you're like, hey, that's me. That, that's me who everyone is watching. That's me who all the kids are looking up to. That's a great role model you're following here. Big thanks to Johnny for joining us on our live broadcast. And he wasn't the only one that joined us in that homecoming victory last night. He was also joined by a fellow teammate of his. Spencer Hansen joined us in the fourth quarter. And it was great to hear all the great things Spencer has going on for him in the professional world, getting his degree alongside of Johnny. Um, And maybe he's not necessarily coming back and coaching, obviously, as he has taken a new venture um, in life away from Reed City. But he still finds his way coming back to support the school and the program, and especially the people that really gave him a great experience. And it's awesome to see a lot of those alumni back, especially on homecoming yesterday. And I think Spencer really does set a great example of what a lot of our youth athletes look up to. And it's those former athletes that they, those youth, watched older years of those guys and coming back to learn from them. It's a very special moment and especially a special young man. Here's our interview with Spencer uh, from the fourth quarter of yesterday's win. Welcome back here as we are now joined in the booth by another alum. We're just streaking all of them up here. We had Johnny Andres and now the big reveal. Mark, do you want to reveal him or shall I? Go ahead. I I think I did the last one. It's your turn. It's Spencer Hanson. Spencer, thank you so much for joining us. We'll open with the same question. Obviously, you played with quite a few of these guys last year. So far, what you what you've seen from the guys that you've played with, obviously last year you had Kianis in the backfield quite a bit with you guys. He was also playing in the secondary. A lot of these guys that you played with, how does it feel to come back and be able to see them as Ervin's not able to catch the kick? He's going to have to try to maybe return it. He's going to stay in. He's still on his feet and gets inside the 10-yard line. A dangerous run will go with 7.07 to go. Boy, that was scary. Irvin just muffed the kickoff. I think he could have fallen on it in the end zone because he never had possession. It would not have been a safety, but I don't think he knew that, so ran it out. Luckily, he gets it out to the 10, and that's where the Coyotes will start. Sure. And uh, here, we'll rephrase that question for Spencer. I'm giving all the hard questions first, which is not on not a good thing for me, the interviewer. So what does it feel? How does it feel for you to be back on homecoming here at Reed City? We'll start with that. Um, it feels weird not playing because I don't know. I just miss playing in front of the crowd and the great atmosphere. And like a few players, like, like for instance, Landu, uh, Landon and Andrew and Tyler and Jack's not playing tonight, but like those guys, I just miss playing with them. And, uh, it's good to see them doing well and, uh, playing a great game on uh, homecoming. Reese Dew is going to be in at quarterback here for the next upcoming play calls. He'll make some personnel changes 
um, especially for you. Uh, just talk about right now, obviously, past your high school career athletically as well as academically. Uh, what's been new in the life of Spencer Hansen? What are you up to these days? Uh, so I go to school at Grand Valley, and uh, I'm going for business. Um, I don't play any sports anymore. I just go for, for school, and uh, I like to come home on the weekend and watch, watch Reed City football. Absolutely. Rosas gets the carry. He's going to pick up a couple yards, maybe about five, as he adds to his total. Irvin will check in the ball game at receiver. Uh, sorry to hear you're at Grand Valley. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, a bulldog has to make a joke at some point. But um, especially for um, the great seasons that you had last year, obviously football getting into the state semifinals. What a basketball run as well. You didn't get as far in the bracket, but what a fun district final basketball game that is. Uh, just talk about being back here in the community and still staying involved, even though you're still at school, still coming back here to watch games. Yeah, I just lo- I just love it here, and I just love the fans, and I just love the atmosphere, like at football games and at basketball games. I just I just love the community, and I just think it's it's great. You played with this whole offensive line last year, Spencer. Yeah. I think so. Uh, four seniors this year; they were juniors last year with uh, with Woodside, who's the only junior. Um, you've watched a lot of games this year. What are you seeing? Is there improvement on the line play? Uh, what are you seeing is the big difference, the, the big step that they've made this year over last year that maybe can get us over that hurdle that unfortunately we weren't able to get past when you were a player. <laughs> right. Um, I just, from what I see, uh, I just see them playing more together as, as one. And just like, I just think the chemistry has really done well for them. Like playing, another year with each other and just having another off season with each other. I think they're playing way better together and, uh, you know, just working at like that one, just trying to go for the win. And like, that's the only thing that matters. I think that they're doing a lot better with that. Big thanks to Spencer for joining us. And man, that stirred up some controversy. I'll tell you what, both of these Reed City teams from this year and last year that I have had the privilege of covering have had some incredible athletes and some incredible seasons so far. Obviously, this year's is still going two or more games, but I think there's a legitimate argument that we could go either way on which team's better, but that's just going to be your opinion to tell if you're a Reed City football fan um, or the Big Rapids Cardinals as well. Last year's team was really good. Is this year's team to the same caliber? It's a great question, and it always brings a debate. But the fact that we're even talking about it, that's what matters most. It's the memories, it's the lessons learned, and it's the pride that you take in your school that you spent and gave your heart out for is what really matters at the end of the day. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this special interview episode. We will try to get as many of these together as we can with all the busy things we got going on here at the station, the Big Rapids Media Network. Big thanks to our sponsors. Big thanks to you, the listener. Be sure to subscribe and follow or get that preset down on your radio down uh, for each and every Saturday at 3.30 p.m. You can also check out Behind the Bulldogs, a Ferris State Sports exclusive podcast here on the same exact network at three o'clock. Big thanks to all of you. Brandon Ward signing off here on the West Michigan Sports Show here on News Radio WBRN.